Hey everyone, this is Summon Nerdy Guy back again with another video. And today's video is just going to be a big bulk pickups video. This is from the last couple months of the year. I figured I'd do one pickup video before the end of the year. And what better day than New Year's Eve to upload it. So hopefully everybody who watches these videos had a happy holidays and a happy new year and all that good stuff. But uh, so this is what I've accumulated over the past couple months. It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> I won't deny it's a lot of stuff. And I had trouble remembering everything that I had been getting. And I was like, did I already show that? Don't think I did. Add it to the pile. Did I show that? No, I don't think so. Add it to the pile. So if there are any repeats, I apologize in advance. Um, but yeah, without further ado, I'm just going to get right into it. Uh, so first thing, these are not games, but they're game related, and I got them from Japan a little while ago, and I definitely wanted to show them. There's this little Olimar keychain with a little blue Pikmin there. It is from Pikmin 2, which is really, really cool. And then this, it's a really obscure thing. I've seen some of these before, but never one based on this character. Uh, but that is a Klonoa 2 um, phone card from Japan. So I... From my understanding, it's pretty much instead of using um, like cash to use a payphone, you would just like load a certain amount of money onto one of these cards and you can just go up to a payphone and just like swipe it and then use a payphone that way. Is my understanding. If I'm completely wrong about that, someone correct me, but I'm pretty sure that's what they were used for. Um, so I don't think I'm going to go in any particular order just because there's so much and I can't remember uh like around the time period i got every single thing some of these are actually fairly recent uh two of them or three of them yeah i got just yesterday so <laughs> um but this one i'll start with this because it's a cartridge only but someone at gamestop traded in a bunch of their ds stuff 3ds and regular ds and i saw this game and i was like man i never see digimon stuff for the ds so i was like you know what i'll take a shot at it it was, uh, I think, 30 bucks complete. I saw um, sold listings for like 70-ish. Um, but that is Digimon Dusk. Really cool. Um, like I said, I've never really seen that many Digimon games on the DS. So I thought, hey, I'd give it a, give it a go if I can get it a little bit cheaper than what eBay's asking for. Uh, I guess I'll just go through my stack of Switch stuff first. So we have Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Of course, I had to get the double pack. Unfortunately, this year, the double pack did not have a, um, a steelbook, or I should say this generation, because with Sword and Shield, we got a steelbook, and Sun and Moon, we got a steelbook, and I thought for sure Scarlet and Violet would, but it did not. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. The double pack is still cool. Um, not much I can really say that hasn't already been said about this game. Uh, there's some ups and some downs, and I don't know. Overall, it's not too bad, though. I'm still having fun with it. Uh, I haven't got as far. I know a lot of my friends are Pokemon fanatics and they finished the game in like one night and I was like, I can't do that. <laughs> um, I think I'm only on the third gym right now, but I don't know. It's been fun exploring and not having to do just the linear path of going from gym one to eight. Like there's different stuff that branches out, makes you do different things. I don't know. It's a little more unique than the normal Pokemon games. Uh, we have Atari 50, the 50th anniversary collection that has a ton of stuff. I think it has over 100 games. Some of them are like updated, enhanced versions of, of uh, old games. Some of them are ones that were never released before, which I thought was really cool. And um, the main reason I wanted this, uh, for one, it's in a steel book, which I thought was really awesome. Uh, I'm not going to take it out of here because it's actually really, really hard to get out of this slip cover. But um, I was most excited about the Jaguar games. They have Atari Jaguar games on here. And there ain't no way in hell I'm ever buying Atari Jaguar. So it was cool that they put some of those games on here. Uh, some of these are like my Black Friday pickups and stuff like that. I uh, got Hotline Miami for only 15 bucks. It was on sale at GameStop. I ended up getting that. Uh, WarioWare, Get It Together. Just one of the first party games I didn't have yet. And it was on sale. Arrowheart. Uh, this game is pretty cool. It is almost exactly identical uh, art style wise to link to the past, which I thought was really cool. Um, I don't know if the pictures really do it that much justice, but you can kind of tell like the top down view, just like, I mean, there's a lot of games that have top down view. You can't obviously call every single one of them linked to the past just for looking like that. Um, but I don't know, like the sprite work and stuff kind of resembles it too. So I thought that was neat. 
Uh, this went on clearance at GameStop, and I snagged it right away before anybody else could. Uh, that is Monarch. Any of the NIS games, I try to go after. Some of them, I try to get day one if I can get like the um, the special editions on the NIS website. But a lot of them sell out really, really fast, especially the Trails ones. So sometimes I'll just wait and see whenever the copies go on sale because they seem to do that a lot. Voice crack. <laughs> they seem to do that a lot because a lot, not a lot of like normies, I guess you know, if that, that's a mean way to put it. But like, you know, most people aren't looking for um, NIS games. Like the fans that know about the company get the games and then uh, like game stores like GameStop or even Best Buy, they'll get like one or two copies of these kind of games and they just sit until nobody wants to buy them and then they have to liquidate them or whatever. Uh, Nier Automata got this for only 20 bucks on Black Friday. Really good deal. Um, I already have it on the PS4, but of course, everything, I, I want to have at least everything on the Switch. Gotta have it all. Uh, this was a Christmas gift. I got Splatoon 3, finally. I've been really wanting to play Splatoon 3. Uh, I just hadn't gotten around to picking it up myself yet, so there's that. Uh, another one that went on clearance and is also a, another um, NIS game, and that is Yuru Kill. I think I pronounced that right. It's weird. It's like a visual novel, like murder mystery, it seems like, but it also has shoot 'em up elements in there for some reason. And it even says that uh, in the thing. Yeah, pure shmup lineage. It says on that little picture there, which I thought was interesting. Can't wait to try that out. And all these, even though they're just the normal releases, they still come with like uh, booklets and card, like art cards uh, and digital soundtracks, which is pretty neat. Um, I will save this one because it ties in with something else. Uh, this, I got extremely lucky. Did Digimon survive? So I originally saw this the week before Black Friday and was on sale for $35. And I was like, that's a pretty good deal. You know, that's half price. But I was like, you know what? I'll wait. I don't really need it right now. And then on the day of Black Friday, I was like, you know what? Maybe I will get that. 35 isn't bad. So I go to GameStop I always go to. And it's gone. I was like, dang. And then I went to another GameStop. Gone. I was like, why? <laughs> and so I looked it up on the GameStop app. Here, it went on sale for only $17.99. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Every single GameStop within a 50 mile radius was sold out of it. Every single one. And I was like, how in the heck did I miss that? Well, I ended up finding a PS4 version of the game. Uh, it was all the Switch versions. I should, I should clarify. All the Switch versions were the ones that were gone but I could still get the PS4 one. So I was like, you know what? I just want to play the game. I'll get the PS4 one. And I went to a different GameStop location a couple days after. So the sale was still going on for Black Friday. Uh, I think it was just the whole weekend or whatever. And there's just randomly a copy sitting there, $17.99. And I was like, how? They said every GameStop was sold out of these within a 50 mile radius. And here it was an online order that someone canceled. Uh, so it must have been like bundled with a bunch of other stuff and they just canceled the whole thing. So it included this and they just put it back on the shelf. And I was like, I can't believe I scored that. <laughs> That's great. So I returned the PS4 version because I don't need two of them. So I returned the PS4 version and kept this one. So got it for really cheap. And then this one, uh, this was the last normal Switch game because it ties in with something else. But that is Rune Factory 5. Um, I ended up getting this for Christmas. And uh, I obviously already wanted this game, but the reason I really wanted to try to get my hands on this is because I found the collector's edition for only 20 bucks at um, the exchange that I've mentioned that numerous times on this channel. Uh, but yeah, I got it for only 20 bucks, 25 bucks, something like that. Uh, but it said without game, of course, but it came with everything else. Uh, they had a complete one for 80 and then they had this for 25 and I was just like, okay, yeah, I can just find the game later so ended up doing that uh no there's a lot of switch <laughs> um we have death's door uh my friend mike was actually talking about this game and he had ordered it from i'm 8-bit i think it was either i'm 8-bit or um uh, fan gamer i can't remember which one but they had a slightly different boxed version of death's door but then they put it up for pre-order at gamestop so i was like you know what yeah i'll go ahead and snag it it was like 40 bucks for the boxed edition which was really cool so there's that and i completely forgot i don't think i showed this in a video 
and it's sitting right over here. So I'm just going to snag it real quick. And if I did, I apologize, but I don't want to miss the chance to show it. Uh, but I did end up getting the Bayonetta 3 Trinity Masquerade Edition, right? Yeah, Trinity Masquerade. Uh, again, if I had already showed this in a pickup video before, I, I know this came out in like October, I believe, end of September, early October. So I don't think I did ever show it, but here it is. Uh, and I was under the impression, I, I've already opened it and everything, but when it was announced, I was under the impression that you got steelbooks of all the games. Uh, no, that is not the case. They are just uh, regular cases of the games with different alternate artwork on them, which, you know, still pretty cool, but I was really hoping they would be steelbooks because I like steelbooks. But if that were the case, that would have been a lot more expensive. <laughs> uh, and then... I'm going to save, there's two more Switch related things, but I'm going to save them for last because they are very, very big. Well, not very big, but they're, they're significant. So I will save those for last. Sorry, I'm trying to like truck along through this because I don't want it to be like extremely long video, but I don't want it to be super short either. I, I don't know. Anyways, um, this is one of the ones I just picked up yesterday. Nickelodeon Party Blast. I went to a retro game store uh, that is actually inside of his new location is inside a grocery store that I service for my work like every single day. <laughs> so I'm always there now. Uh, but this was just a game I remember renting from Blockbuster all the time as a kid. And then one of my neighbors had it when I was growing up too. So I was like, you know, what? I just, I just really want to have this just in case I ever get an itch to play it. It was only like 10 bucks. So Nickelodeon Party Blast. And then this was the big purchase. So I was going back and forth myself. And I texted one of my friends about it uh, to see, I, I want to either get into collecting, because last video I said I want to try to get into more uh, retro stuff instead of just collecting limited run and switch stuff all the time. And I was like, I either want to go for complete in box Nintendo 64 games or complete in box Game Boy stuff, primarily Game Boy Advance, maybe some Game Boy Color, but mainly uh, Game Boy Advance. And I was like, I can't, I can't make up my mind. They're equally as expensive to collect for. And uh, like 64 has less games, I would say, at least ones that I want, because I'm not going for a complete set of anything, just want to get the stuff that I want to get. And uh, just the 64 boxes are super nostalgic. That's why I was like kind of gravitating towards that more. Well, I think I made <laughs> my decision for myself because the shop owner gave me a really good deal on this and I traded some stuff in towards it. So I got it for way cheaper than the retail price that it goes for on eBay and stuff. Uh, but that is for Mischief Makers for Nintendo 64, complete in box. It's a very nice condition box here. Awesome. Uh, that's what the original price was, but that is not what I paid for it. And yeah, really, really cool. So I guess I'm going to go after 64 games, <laughs> complete in the box. Uh, I don't know. Just like, I like the all the different sides of the box have different colors and everything. I always really liked that as a kid. And I just remember seeing Nintendo 64 boxes at like my cousin's house and different things like that. So I think this is what I'm going to go after is 64 games. I have a handful of complete in box ones. And I don't know if it'll be any more difficult just to get boxes. It almost seems more worth it just to buy it with the game. Because it's not that much more expensive to just get another copy in the box. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So, yeah, Mischief Makers. I just remember seeing this. I've never played this game. I just remember seeing it in YouTube videos of, like, hidden gems on the 64. And this one would always come up. And I didn't know anything about it. So, uh, that was a long time ago, though. Because when I was a kid, obviously, I didn't have the kind of money to be collecting this uh, complete in box stuff. Or just a lot of stuff in general. I would only get certain things, whatever I would find find at the flea market and things like that so yeah that one kind of stood out to me uh whenever I picked up that Digimon game like I said the guy had a bunch of 3ds stuff and this was one that I just didn't have yet it's a first party game and it was less than 20 bucks Mario Party Top 100 I know not a lot of people like this because there's no party mode it's just all mini games and that's all the game is but you know if that's all you want to do sometimes I don't feel like playing the board game part of Mario Party and I just want to goof around on the mini games and this is a good way to do it because they have mini games from like one through eight i'm pretty sure just the top 100 you know yeah boy <laughs> um 
This one was also one that I just got yesterday, and I was just playing it before I started filming this video, and it was on sale for only 30 bucks, and I had gotten a gift card for GameStop for Christmas, so I ended up picking it up, and that is Valkyrie Elysium for the PS5. Uh, I've never actually played any of the Valkyrie profile games. I've always wanted to. Uh, they're just a little bit pricey. <laughs> Uh, but this, I mean, I don't really think you have to play the other ones to understand what's going on in this one, at least to my understanding. Uh, it's an action RPG. It's really fun. I'm liking it. I like the art style. Uh, it's, I mean, it's not like super colorful. It's, you know, like dull and I don't know, but the environments look really cool. Like you, the first, I only did the first area, but you're in like this rundown, like castle environment there's like a little bit of field and stuff but you go into like the little town and stuff with all these like ruined houses and stuff and then you go into this castle and fight a big monster i don't know it's a pretty fun game so far so good i like it uh another controversial game kind of uh sonic frontiers uh i really like it uh it's better than sonic forces way better than sonic forces was there's still a lot of not a lot but there i still have issues with the game um main thing being not even with the game itself i originally pre-ordered the switch version of this game and i went to pick it up and uh i pre-ordered it because it came with the steelbook well the switch they never made a switch steelbook for it they just made them all the same steelbook for disc based games even if you got the switch version so i was like you know what if that's the case might as well get the ps5 version because i also heard that the switch version doesn't run very well but that's okay because i'll probably end up buying it when it goes on sale at some point but uh, definitely reminds me a lot more of the Sonic Adventure type game ish because uh, you have like an open world to run around in but then you still play like classic Sonic levels you have to like go and do these little plurals go to to go to the, like I can't remember what dimension they call it but that's what all like the glitchy stuff is and uh, and you can get the Sonic Adventure soap to Sonic Adventure 2 soap shoes which is the best because I never thought those would ever make a comeback but they did in this game and it just makes me feel even more like playing Sonic Adventure. So, I don't know. I like it. I'm a Sonic fanboy, so I'm going to find the good in it somehow. Uh, another game I got for Krimis, and that is Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. I haven't had a chance to start this one up yet, but um, this one was also on sale the week of Christmas. And uh, I definitely wanted to give it a shot. I played the demo a little bit, but um, they have to defeat Chaos, remember chaos in the trailer he said chaos at least 25 times <laughs> uh this one was also a gift from a friend uh just something he said that we could both play together you know and i don't know looks like a fun game he said it's like an rts style game that is tribes of midgard so there's that looks pretty neat i think the art style is kind of cool kind of reminds me of like a i don't know almost like a like a, not a flash game, but like those old games on the Xbox 360 that you get like a free download of or something. I don't know. It kind of gives me that vibe. And that's not a bad thing either because a lot of those games were really fun for what they were. So yeah. A uh, couple more games that I got for Black Friday. Ghostwire Tokyo. Got it for like 20 bucks on sale. Um, I've heard mixed things about this game. Uh, um, what else do I want to say about it? There's somebody else that had... Oh, Happy Console Gamer. Yeah, he reviewed this and kind of gave his two cents on it. And a lot... I watch a lot of YouTubers that I kind of... Which I think everybody does. They watch YouTubers that they, they kind of think alike. So he found some good things to say about this game. And you know what? I I feel like it would be worth a shot for only 25 bucks. So uh, it is a Bethesda game, though. I'm not a huge supporter of them. <laughs> uh, not because... I mean they have their controversies and stuff, but I've just never been that big of a fan of like Fallout or Elder Scrolls or, uh, I do like Doom, but, uh, I'm not like a huge Bethesda person, but yeah, there's Ghostwire Tokyo. And there is the next one is Guardians of the Galaxy for PS5. I've heard really good things about this one and I do like my Marvel characters and Guardians of the Galaxy is pretty cool. Uh, I heard the soundtrack is amazing. It's just like the movies, all the, like the 80s music and stuff like that. So this should be pretty cool. It was only 15 bucks on sale. So can't complain about that. And then we have the lonely random PS2 game that I found on Macari. 
I got it for only 10 bucks, and it's going for like 30 now. It used to only be like a 10 to $15 game, but it's starting to go up a, quite a bit for some reason. Uh, but that is Virtua Quest. It's like an action RPG set in the Virtua Fighter universe for some reason. You play as this kid, and you can uh, train and fight with the different characters from Virtua Fighter. So, I don't know. I like the quirky, like old style Sega stuff like that. They just did weird stuff like that. It just took chances on making random stuff like Shenmue. Um, I think Shenmue was supposed to be more, more or less the same kind of deal where uh, he would be in, a, in the universe where like the Sega characters exist and stuff like that. And he would interact with them is what it was kind of supposed to be from uh, what I remember reading about. Uh, so this was that similar type of thing. Just like there's an RPG on the Dreamcast where you play as a Sega employee while Sega's going out of business kind of thing and you have to like fight all these different Sega characters. Like, I don't know. Sega was unique. They did cool stuff. I I really like that kind of meta stuff. So uh, these are the last two things. Uh, I will show this one because it's a bit bigger and uh, it is a special edition of a game. It was supposed to come at the end of November, and it didn't come to like the second week of December, but that's okay because it arrived. Um, the game is not in here though. The game is came before it, and this the special edition stuff came after, almost like the Xenoblade one. Uh, but that is Persona 5 Royal for the Switch in this cool treasure chest. It's really neat. Uh, it is cardboard. I, I mean, it's not cheap, it's not like cheaply made. It's not like flimsy cardboard, but it's just, you know, cardboard box. But it has the handles on both sides. I almost dropped it. <laughs> and it has this little latch there. And then you open it up. Looks really cool. There's the shoulder bag in there, which is neat. Uh, we have the tarot cards there. And I believe these are the character art cards. And then I didn't get a chance to open this yet. I can't remember what this thing was. I think it's a picture frame thing. Yeah, it's like a picture frame. I think you're supposed to put art cards in it. I can't remember. But, you know, it's a plastic picture frame. So, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, a little disappointed with... I mean, obviously, I knew what was in it before buying it. I just knew I really wanted it because I missed out on both other special editions for Persona 5. Uh, the original, and then when they did Persona 5 Royal on PS4. Um, but those two are both way better, <laughs> in my opinion, honestly. Like, the one comes with Joker's mask, the other one comes with a uh, a plushie of Morgana and stuff like that. I'm just like, why couldn't they throw one of those in here? Just throw a plushie in here of a character or something. I don't know. Just make it a little bit more worth the, the purchase. Especially with the 20-something dollar shipping. Like, hmm... Could have done a little bit more, <laughs> but you know, is what it is. Shouldn't be complaining about if I freaking bought the thing because I didn't have to buy it. You know, uh, hopefully they do special editions for both Persona 3 and 4. Those are coming out next month. I'm hoping, cross my fingers, they at least do a physical release or do some kind of special edition thing would be really cool. And then this is the last thing, arguably the biggest thing. And I know what most people are going to say. You're a moron. Why'd you buy this? You literally, last video, just showed one of these. You don't need another one. You're right. But it looks really cool. <laughs> that is the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Switch OLED system. Look at the colors. They're so cool. The Joy-Cons are purple and red. How could you not? Look at the design on the back. Look how cool that is. How could you say no when the GameStop employee tells you that there's only one left and they're selling out fast? We've had a bunch of people call about it. Uh, <laughs> of course I had to buy it. <laughs> no. um, I don't know. I, I like the special designed switches. I think they're really neat. And I couldn't help it. I just, I really wanted it. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I have the Splatoon one now, I have the Animal Crossing, I have the Pokemon uh, Diamond and Pearl Switch Lite, and then I have this. I ended up trading in my Day 1 Switch because it was starting to get really bad, the fan was getting really loud, the Joy-Cons were getting drift. Uh, I really wanted to keep it because, you know, sentimentally, 
I got the Switch the day it came out, and that, that was like a big deal for me. But, you know, sometimes you just got to let things go, especially if you want to get a little bit of an upgrade. And that is what I did. I ended up getting this. So um, my plan is my Splatoon Switch is going to be for every other game. And the Pokemon, this OLED Switch, or the Scarlet Violet Switch, is going to be for just strictly Pokemon games. I'm going to have all my files for Pokemon all put on this, and this will be my Pokemon Switch, which is ridiculous. <laughs> but I don't know. I thought it was a cool idea. If I'm like, if I'm going to have it, I might as well use it, and that'll give me a reason to use it, is put all my Pokemon files on here so I could play all my Pokemon stuff on this Switch. So there we go. That is it. And I heard rumors, and I saw leaked pictures. I don't know if they're real or not, because, you know, people fake stuff all the time, of a Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Switch, which that would be insane. And I just may have to get that one, too. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that is my pickup video. I'm trying to think if I missed anything. Oh, there is this guy. He's, it's not a game, but it's game-related. I haven't been able to find any of these anywhere, but I found one yesterday. It's one of the Splatoon 3 Amiibos. It's a little small fry. So, there's him and all of his glory. That is the last thing, for sure. Because uh, looking around, I don't see anything else. So, yeah. Uh, if you like the video, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, there'll be plenty more pickup videos next year. So, Happy New Year to everybody. Stay safe. Everything. And, uh, yeah. Until the next one. See you.